Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now going to answer question number three from the October 2023 um, International A Level Pure Mathematics um, P2 paper from LXL. This question is um, about trig equations. So it says in this question, you must show all stages of your working. Solutions relying entirely on calculator technology are not acceptable. Solve for theta between zero up to and including 360 degrees, the equation two tan theta plus three sine theta equals zero, giving your answers as appropriate to one decimal place for five marks. So first of all, you know, you cannot just use um, a calculator and put this equation inside and get the answers out and write down the answers. Of course, that will not be acceptable and you won't get any marks for that. Um, if you want to check your answers using the calculator function, that's fine. As long as you've shown all your steps, um, you know, to see how you got the answer. Right. So now um, when we're solving trig equations in P2, we normally have to... Um, rewrite the equation in a way using trig identities in a way that we are able to then solve the equation. The way it's written right now, it's not so easy to see how to solve it. Okay. Now there are two main identities that we will, um, we should know in P2 and they carry on to, you know, further levels of maths and they're the basic foundation, the two foundational uh, identities upon which all the other identities are basically based. So they're the fundamental ones that you should know for sure. And in Cambridge, they give you this in the, in the formula sheet. In, in Excel, they don't give them the formula sheet. So you should know them. So sine, sine, the sine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared of the same angle equals 1. That's one very, very important identity. Okay, that's a very, very important identity. Sine squared of an angle plus cosine squared of an angle equals 1. And what this means is the angle, the sine of the angle all squared plus the cosine of the same angle all squared equals one. That's what it means. Sine squared A means sine, sine A all squared. They have to be squared. Okay, you can't have sine A plus cosine A equals one. That's not true. Only sine A all squared plus cosine A all squared equals one. They have to be the same angle. And the other very, very important identity is that the tan of an angle will give you the same value as the sine of the same angle over the cosine of the same angle. Okay, so these are the two fundamental identities upon which all the other identities are based. Okay, very important for us to know that. Now, if you want to solve this equation, we have, we're starting off with 2 times tan of theta plus 3 times the sine of theta is equal to 0. All right, and we have to find what theta is to one decimal place, and we have our limit which we have to pay great attention to. The limits are between zero and 360. Is zero is not included. 360 is included. That should be in our head. That could cause us to lose marks if we don't uh, take note of that. Okay, it's important to look at these limits. Right, there might be some uh, relevance to this in the answer. Okay, sometimes you know the, the, the actual sign doesn't make much of a difference, but it might do this time. Okay, now how do I go about solving this equation? Well, if you look at our identities, we can't really use the first identity here at all. But the second identity, that's I guess that's the only thing we could really do, is to change the tan theta into sine theta over cosine theta. So this becomes 2 times sine theta over cosine theta plus 3 sine theta equals 0. And then what we can do here next to simplify this would be, I guess, get rid of the fraction. Let's multiply everything by cosine theta. If you multiply everything by cosine theta, you end up with 2 times sine theta plus 3 times sine theta times cosine theta equals 0. Now, one of the things that a lot of students do at this stage, which is completely wrong, they say, okay, look, we have a common factor of sine theta. In fact, they might even do it from this stage here. Let's divide everything by sine theta, and we got rid of the sine theta, and we got a nice, easy equation to deal with. All right? But no, that's not what we should do. Just like if I had, if I had x squared minus x equals um, zero, okay, or x squared say minus three x equals zero, something like that. If I was to divide by x, I would end up with x minus three equals zero, and I'll end up with x equals three. 
Okay, now that is not the only solution to this equation. There's another solution. I lost that solution. Why? Because I divided by a variable. You never divide by the variable. You always take that variable out as a common factor. Okay, so you end up with x times x minus 3 equals 0. That's how you should really do it. So either x equals 0 or x equals 3. We have the two solutions. We didn't lose any solutions. By dividing by a variable, you lose solutions. So if we divided by sine theta here, we would lose all the solutions that would come from one of the factors. Okay, so it's very, very important for us to understand that point here. Okay, we must always um, take out any common factor um, of a variable, take it out as a factor. If it's a constant, for example, if it said, you know, um, you know, 4 sine theta plus 6 sine theta cosine theta, you could divide by 2. That's no problem. But if it's a variable, you never divide by the variable. Otherwise, you will lose solutions. So here, the common factor in these two terms is sine theta. So we don't divide by sine theta. Rather, we take it out as a factor, leaving us with 2 plus 3 cosine theta close the bracket, equals zero. So now we'll have solutions from this particular section, sine theta equals zero. And we'll also have solutions from cosine theta. Let me just show the whole step. Two plus cosine theta, two plus three cosine theta equals zero, in which case three cosine theta is equal to negative two. So cosine of theta equals negative two over three. Now for sine theta equals zero, to find the first answer, if you don't know the sine curve, you can just go by the sine curve if you wanted to. We know the sine curve. I'll show you that first. If you just know what the sine curve looks like, you'll be able to understand how to find the answer. So the sine curve between 0 and 360 looks like this. So you have solutions at 0, at 180, and 360. However, if we remember what our limits were, okay, as I mentioned up here, it's the 0 is not included. Okay, So we have 0, theta, up to 360. Those are our limits. So I can't include the 0, but I can include the 180 and the 360. That's just by looking at the, the sine curve. Okay, we can also do it by thinking about, supposing you didn't know what the sine curve, which you really should do, but if you say, if you press inverse sine of theta, so inverse sine of z, um, 0, okay, you'll end up with 0 degrees. Okay, so if you did theta equals inverse sine of 0, you end up with 0 degrees. Now, that is not in our range, but I'm going to write it down. Okay, now for the sine curve, there's another angle, okay, which is shared always, which is always 180 minus the angle that the calculator gave us. Okay, so it's always 180 minus this angle. So it's good. in this case, it's going to be 180 minus 0, which gives us the 180. And then from these two angles, you, you take these angles and you add and subtract 362 and from them until you're out of the range. So if I take 0 and I add 360, that's going to give me 360. If I subtract 360, it's going to be minus 360. If I take 180, I add 360, it's going to be 540. If I take away 360, it's going to be minus 180. They'll be out of the range. So the only two angles in our range are 180 and 360 from the sine part. Okay. So for the sine curve, we have a you know particular way of dealing with it. If if you if you understand that, and it's all based on the symmetry of the sine curve, it makes it very easy to solve. For the cosine curve. Uh, we're going to press inverse cosine of minus two thirds. It's not one of those angles which are as friendly as the other. So we do inverse cosine of minus two thirds. Okay, so we said inverse cosine minus two over three. Make sure that our calculator is in degree mode, which it is. Equals. It's going to give us one hundred thirty-one point eight one zero. One hundred thirty-one point eight one zero degrees. Okay, that's the, the main angle the calculator gave us. Now, for the cosine curve, there's another main angle, okay, which is, if we look at the cosine curve, it looks something like this. We'll have this type of shape, right? This is 0, this is 90, 180, 270, 360. So we just found an angle here which has a negative ratio, it's negative 2 thirds, somewhere over here. That's why we choose 131 point something. Now, there's another angle which shares the same cosine ratio over here. Okay, and its distance from 0 is the same as its distance from 360, but it's less than 360. So for cosine curve, you do 360 minus the angle that we got from the calculator. Okay, so we take this angle, we do 360, take away that angle, and it gives us the other main angle, which is 228.190. 
228.190. Just write to three SF for now, to three decimal places for now. Okay. And from these two other, these two angles we just found, which is one is over here, one is over there, the sine curve repeats every 360 degrees. So 360 away from this will be the next angle. 360 away from that will be the next angle. But of course, it's outside of our range. So these are the two angles that we need from here. Okay, for the sine curve, if, if we had got a different angle like someone over here, then, you know, to find the other angle, we do 180 minus that angle. Okay, as you can see, the, the relationship between them, that is this distance from zero, and this is this distance is less than 180. So it would be the main angle, and as I said, 180 minus that angle, that's how we got the 180, and then we add 360s to and from these angles. Okay, so for the sine curve, okay, we first get the calculator answer. And then we do 180 minus the calculator answer, always. And then we take the answer from 1 and 2, and we add and subtract 360 to and from those angles. Okay? And for the cosine curve, we get the calculator answer. And then we do 360 minus the calculator answer. And then... We take the answers for 1 and 2, and again, we add and subtract 360 degrees. Okay, that's for cosine. Okay, for, for tangent, it's much easier, because the tangent curve, just basically, you get the calculator answer, and, you know, the only thing with the, the, the tangent curve, you take the ca calculator answer, and you add and subtract 180. It just repeats every 180 degrees. That's it. There's not, like, any second main angle. Here you have a main angle, then the second main angle, and those two angles for, for cosine and for, you know, sine, you add a subtract 360 and you got your answers. Okay, so that's basically a summary of how you deal with the answers that come out of your calculator for sine, cosine and tangent. All right, so now we have our answers. So we got theta equals, if we look at them in order, we start with 131.8. One decimal place is how we should normally give them. Yes, one decimal place, if appropriate. Uh, if it's a whole number, like for example, the next answer is 180, we don't have to put that to one decimal place because it's an exact value. Um, and we don't include zero. Why? Because it's not in our range. If you look here, zero is not in our range. Don't include it, otherwise you could lose a mark. For sure you'll lose a mark. The next angle is 228.2 degrees. Okay, and the last final angle is 360 degrees, which is included because that's included in our range. And there's the answer to part A of this question okay and that that's you know that concludes that question now we're going to go on to part b okay i think we need this okay, so now for part b it says hence or otherwise okay now very important word hence means using your answer from the previous part of the question which is normally the easiest way to proceed or otherwise okay you could do the same thing again now Remember the last question on the on the last page was almost identical to this. 2 tan theta plus 3 sine theta equals 0. So the question was 2 tan theta plus 3 sine theta equals 0. So they're almost identical. The only difference between... So whenever it says hence, always look back to the last question. What was the last question? Okay, how can I relate this last question to this question? And they're almost identical except the 2x plus 40 degrees has taken the place of the theta, all right? So you can see it's only worth two marks. We don't have to go through the whole process of what we did solving this. We just know that the theta that we found is the same as 2x plus 40 in this question. So it says, find the smallest positive solution of 2x plus of, of, this, of this answer. So we basically will end up with 2x plus 40 equals, and you'll have all these angles. 131.8, 180, 228.2, and 360 degrees. All these answers, okay, uh, would be not theta, but 2x plus 40. Now, the smallest positive solution to this would be given by taking this angle, okay? If we took, for example, 0, which was smaller than this, okay, and we found what x is, okay, it was going to give us a negative answer because we know the first solution to this was 0, which we rejected, but if we if we want to find the smallest possible smallest positive solution to this and we chose the zero, we have to do two x plus forty, we'll have two x plus forty degrees equals zero, and you'll end up with two x equals minus forty, 
So x will be minus 20 degrees, which is not a positive answer. Okay, so we can't choose that. This is what's going to give us the smallest positive solution. So 2x plus 40 equals 131.8 degrees. So 2x, so we can say x is going to be basically 131.8 minus 40 divided by 2. And I'm going to use this in its more accurate form. Okay, the accurate form of that was, as we got here, um, 131.810. It's always better to use it in its more accurate form. So I'll use this as 131.810, 131.810, minus 40, and then divided by 2. And that will give us the smallest possible value of x, which we're going to round to one decimal place in the end. So we're going to take the answer that we got here, and we're going to do the answer minus 40 over 2. And that gives us 45.905, 45.905 degrees to 3SF to one decimal place. That's 45.9 degrees. And there's the answer to part B of this question. And that concludes uh, question number three from the October 2023 Pure Mathematics P2 paper. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will be added over here. Click on that, you'll find the playlist. Other questions from trig equations um, of P2 can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And here you can find a link to a video which tells you how to use my channel to find those things that you might um, need to find easily. Thank you for watching and see you soon.